Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we've got some exciting news coming from AMD. And before we get started here, I do want to mention that, yeah, my microphone definitely sounds different. I am at CES and one of my bags was lost during transit, had a long way to travel, but I figure we can make this work. Okay, so this is something I'm super excited about, been waiting on it for a while, and I know a lot of you have also. We're getting some brand new desktop APUs with RDNA 3 graphics, and these are the AMD 8000G series processors. Right now, they announced four different SKUs, the 8300G, the 8500G, the 8600G, and of course the 8700G, which is the one that I'm most excited about. These will be available January 31st, so we don't have long to wait. Prices aren't that bad, but I kind of wanted to go over the specs here because uh, when it comes to that new 8700G, obviously it's going to be based on Zen 4. We get 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 4.2 GHz with a boost up to 5.1. I mean, this is looking very similar to the 7840U, which is a mobile variant, but this will run it up to a 65 watt TDP. And we've also got the AMD Radeon 780M iGPU clocked at 2900 MHz. Moving down the list a little bit, we've also got that 8600G, 6 cores, 12 threads, up to 5 gigahertz on those Zen 4 cores, and with this, we're getting the 760M graphics. Now I'll tell you, right off the bat, if you're looking for the best performing desktop APU, that 8700G is definitely the way to go. And they also released some performance slides. With this first slide, we've got that 8700G with the built-in Radeon 780M graphics. These are average frame rates, 1080p, low detail. Cyberpunk 2077 is coming in at 63 FPS, Far Cry 6, 65, Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 68, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 76, Tiny Tina's Wonderland at 80, Hitman 3, 89, Got Borderlands 3 coming in at 91, Metro Exodus at 98, Grand Theft Auto 5 over 100 FPS, F1 2022 over 120 FPS, and of course, Dota, we're getting 165, League of Legends, 236, and World of Tanks Encore, 581 FPS on these integrated graphics. And one thing I didn't see here was any kind of RAM speed, so they didn't mention that. Now, we can definitely take that RAM speed up in a desktop PC, and uh, when I get my hands on one of these, we're going to be testing at all kinds of speeds just to see what would happen, because as we know with these APUs, it's going to be dependent on system memory as VRAM. Faster we can get that, theoretically, we can get better performance out of this iGPU. But we've basically done a lot of testing with this already in the mobile variant. One thing that I really like about this is we're going to be able to take that wattage up. It's got a little bit of higher clock out of the box, and I'm pretty sure we'll be able to do a little bit of overclocking. I've actually been able to get the 7840U up to 3 gigahertz stably, so I'm pretty sure we'll be able to hit 3 gigahertz or maybe even a bit higher on this. But yeah, I'm really excited about this. Obviously, that 8700G is definitely where it's going to be, but if you wanted to save a little bit of money, you could go with the 8600G. And speaking of money saved, AMD has confirmed that the lower end 8500G will retail at 179 the 8600G is going to retail at 229 and the 8700G 329 Now keep in mind, there have been some leaked benchmarks for that 8700G, and it looks like it's definitely beaten out the GTX 1650. So we're not talking RTX 3050 performance or anything like that. But these are going to be perfect for building a small form factor mini ITX 1080p gaming machine. And you can always add a GPU down the road. So you can game now at 1080p and then up the performance by adding something like the newly announced RX 7600 XT or something even more powerful. With that 7600 XT, you can do ultra 1080p all day long. Older stuff is going to run at 1440p. But you could always go higher end if you wanted to, because the CPU itself is definitely going to be putting out some really great performance, given that it's based on Zen 4. Now, as soon as I get my hands on these chips, I will be doing a lot of testing, so let me know in the comments below what you want to see. I'm going to be doing some builds with the 8700G. If I can get the 8600G, I'll also do some testing with that. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I thought it was super exciting. I know a lot of you were really interested in this. Uh, if you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.